This shit is wild. Midjourney just released a new feature. It's a standalone editor where you can use the Midjourney algorithm on any picture ever created. First of all, this new feature is only available on the Midjourney website at the moment, not on Discord. Since this feature is new and powerful, they've had to limit the access to it for now. The new editor is available to three groups of people. Anyone who has made over 10,000 Midjourney images, anyone who has had a subscription for the last 12 months, uninterrupted consecutive 12 months, and anyone who has a yearly subscription. If you fall into one of those categories, you can go to the Midjourney website and you'll find the new editor over here on the left side underneath Personalize. It is labeled as Edit and you'll get a nice little pop-up. Welcome to the Midjourney editor. I've been a member for over a year. What makes this so special is that you can use images from outside of Midjourney. This is like a Photoshop adjacent tool now. You're gonna have to agree to a new terms of service. And you know what, let's go through this. They're saying we're taking extra precautions with the editor. Some harmless prompts might be blocked, but those won't use up your GPU hours. They have a new AI moderator working and it could be a little frustrating to use, but they will continuously improve it of course. They make a note, use the editor responsibly. Misuse that breaks the community guidelines may result in your account suspension or banning without refund. You're accountable for the content you create. <laughs> I have to stress that, okay? Don't try to create any adult content, so to speak. And this is the new layout of the editor. We can edit from a URL or we can upload an image from our computer. Let's try this picture of Shohei Otani. Something you might want to try is shrinking the picture itself and expanding the canvas with Midjourney. We can click on the move or resize, shrink it down and place it wherever. Now we can't submit an empty prompt, so we're going to have to type in something. We could try something simple like a packed baseball stadium, or we can try something a little more different. But the more different your prompt is, the more difficult time Midjourney will have filling in the scene. First, let's take a look at our results here, and like, that's pretty cool so far. <laughs> but it even adds the catcher there, like that's awesome. Kind of looks like he's holding his breath. So let's try a baseball player underwater. We're gonna select the eraser icon, and we're gonna erase a bunch of the image. You can adjust the brush size if you need more fine-tuned control. And hopefully we get some sort of smart selection feature in the future to make this whole process way easier. <laughs> All right, this is a little unexpected, but this feature is new. I'm trying it for the first time. I'd love to hear from you. What do you think are the best practices for prompting and inserting assets into a new scene? Let's try another example. We can click down here on new. Pretty simple. We'll go to edit uploaded image. And you know what, let's try this picture of a cute dog I found on Google. And I'm taking this workflow right from the Midjourney tutorial they provided. Let's pretend this is our dog's birthday and let's dress him up a bit. We'll erase some area around the top and then we'll type something like a dog wearing a party hat. <laughs> okay, uh, these aren't that great. Maybe that one's not bad. You know what, let's lower the brush size and try to give him some sunglasses. Oh, there we go. Look how good that looks like, oh my God. Would you have any idea that this wasn't a real picture? But let's try this. Let's give him a little festive sweater to put on. Do you think Midjourney can pull off an ugly Christmas sweater? There's only one way to find out. Oh yeah, it's coming in nicely. How about that? Oh, we're going with that one right there. Look how cool that picture is. <laughs> a lot of that picture isn't real. The foundation is, but nothing else after. Isn't that wild? Okay, there are quite a few more things I wanna show you. Let's go through them quick. But before we do, I have to tell you about my Midjourney beginner course. I'll be updating the course completely when version 7 finally comes out. And when I do that, the price will be increasing. So if you want to get in at the best possible value for the future, you can click on the link in the description for an extra 25% off. I'd love to see you there. So I showed you how to do this with a picture from your computer, but you can also use your regular Midjourney images. Click on any one of your pictures that you've made so that it expands into this view. Then you wanna make sure you click on Creation Actions, More Options. Find the More Options title again, and that will bring up the regular editor. We'll click on that, and then from here we can open in full editor. Now, I just wanna be clear that that whole process might change in the future. They might move some of these buttons around a little. Either way, we wanna get into the editor and then open it in the full editor. And we saw what it looked like when we put the sweater on a dog, but this whole process works really well with all kinds of clothing. So all we would have to do is erase his suit and then type something else in the prompt. We can leave the prompt the same kind of portrait of a retro vintage game show host. Instead of gray suit, let's go with colorful Memphis 
pattern suit. We'll hit enter. Oh, and look at these, man. Like, that's so cool. I actually love that so much. If you come across an image that you really like, you can export it by upscaling it to the gallery or downloading the image directly. Upscaling it to your gallery will isolate it on mid-journey and bump up the resolution a bit. Downloading just takes this picture and puts it on your computer. So if we go to create, we'll see our picture right here. And then you can download this at a higher resolution. If you want to get back into the editor, you can simply go to edit on the left side and it will bring you here. And if you didn't want this picture, maybe you wanted to go back to the baseball picture, you can click on view all and you will see all of your pictures here. The pictures that you make in the editor are going to live in their own section here. They won't be in your regular gallery. And there's something else you're going to want to know. Every picture made in the editor is private by default because you can use any image. You might want to play around with your face or your living room, changing the furniture, and you don't have to worry about any of those pictures showing up on the public explore page. Private by default, that's pretty cool. But I want to show you something else. We'll go back to our original edit of this guy in his suit. But then if we click up here, we can add a style reference to the generation and this can be so powerful. Like let's take this anime Batman picture. What we want to do is make sure style reference is selected. Now when we hit enter, the suit should be made in this blue, reddish, black anime look. It's not perfect, it's not the epitome of consistency, but it is a pretty cool way of navigating the generation. Like whoa, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Oh, I like that one. That's not bad either. I edited a picture of myself and it gave me this really funny outfit to put on, showing some chest hair. It's a little provocative. And I wanted to point this out. You'll notice it says original session not found, creating a new one. What that means is that all of the options that you saw while creating the images, those do not stay forever. This new editor sort of lives in its own sessions. So I can't see yesterday's sessions, but today's still appear here. Do you see what I mean? Do you see that little bit of a difference? Just keep that in mind. Okay, I showed you how to edit, but let's go to the other big thing that came with this update, the retexture feature. You can use this on any picture. Instead of edit, you're going to click on retexture. Retexture will change the contents of the input image while trying to preserve the original structure. That's the idea. This will take away the chance to erase parts of the picture and instead it's going to retexture the entire thing. When you're in retexture, I want you to think in terms of art styles. So here we're going to try a mosaic stained glass portrait. You can keep things really simple. If you want, you can also include the original character as a character reference. That could certainly work. Like, <laughs> like, whoa, that's pretty intense to go from this to this. like. Isn't that wild? And take a look at what happens when we include this character as the character reference. We'll go from this to this. There are a lot of possibilities with this update and I can't wait to see what you all come up with. Let me show you some more examples that I went through yesterday. One thing that is a lot of fun to do is take a sketch and use the retexture feature. Pen and ink, pencil, anything that's basically black and white can be retextured with some really cool art styles. It looks great in watercolor for sure. Like, look at that. That's amazing. Maybe you're an artist yourself. This can really bring to life. It can add a bunch of color to your original creations. I turned that sketch into a 3D Unreal Engine render. Like, oh my God, isn't that awesome? And doesn't that just open your mind to tons of workflows that you could go through? And I'm telling you, use fashion. Look how cool that shirt is. I wish I had that. Hey, if there's any fashion brands watching right now, get in touch with me. The fact that that concept looks so real and it was made in like 30 seconds just by including a style reference, that's so cool. And I have to show you this one because I liked it so much. Again, I took a pen and ink sketch, but this time I used a character reference for the style. And Mid Journey seemed to know not to include any of the background with this new style, but just to change the look of the character. And like, my god, isn't that beautiful. I can't get enough. You can also combine style reference and character reference. You can add stylized values to the prompt. You can add chaos to the prompt. You can try all of this in style raw. There are so many possibilities. Please have fun experimenting and please let me know if you find anything cool that you think I should try. And if you want to see what my favorite style references are, you could check out this video now. I hope you're doing well. Take care and I'll see you next time. Peace.